Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to present to you guys a hybrid build order to use on those weird maps, uh, the ones with both land and water such as coastal, continental, highland, rivers, and finally Scandinavia. These are all found of course in the DE ranked map pool, so it's very important that you guys get accustomed to playing these maps as well as know as which build orders uh, to actually play and help you know get a solid start on each one of your games. So as I mentioned in my previous video, there's two approaches you can do for the um, uh, for these kind of maps. There's the one dock fire galleys with two ranges on the land, so a more land focused uh, build. And then there's the other one where it's more water focused with two dock fire galleys and then you just full wall on the land. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the one dock fire galleys and then transitioning into two range archers on the land. Uh, in my next video tomorrow, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the water approach. But for now, let's talk about the hybrid one where we start off with a dock in Dark Age to make use of the fish and then we quickly transition into more land approach in Feudal Age. Before we get started though, I just want to talk about the map guide uh, notepad that I had posted in my last video. Uh, I noticed that I missed Ghost Lake and Mongolia thanks to those comments reminding me in the chat. And you guys were basically saying that um, you know, Ghost Lake and Mongolia probably uh, belong in the closed land map section. And I agreed with you guys, I added them here. I also added other top sieves, so a list of four or three sieves that you guys can use on each of the you know, different map types. So I gave you guys more options in case the best sieves were just not for you. Uh, so make sure to check out the map guide or just copy it straight uh, from the YouTube video. Uh, of course, all of these guides are in my Discord, available for Twitch subscribers. All right, but moving on here, uh, let's go ahead and not save. We have the hybrid build notepad. This is the one we're gonna talk about today. So let's hop right into it. 21 fills plus one scout plus four fishing ships. You'll be up with a 26 a pop dark age. Now I wanna you know, just quickly note, you could do only three fishing ships. Uh, although basically what's gonna happen is that you're gonna have to have a few more on cheap uh, in feudal age if you do decide to do that. So that is an option. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it at all. It's not too important. All right, we're moving on for the Dark Age, it's quite standard until uh, the point where you're going to go ahead and make your dock. So instead of making a mill on berries, we're going to make a dock on the best water source we can find. And I'm going to show you guys how to identify where exactly to put your dock in game. So we're going to send two more fills to wood after the initial four to make six on wood total in the Dark Age. And then we're going to go ahead and make fishing ships as soon as we have 75 wood each. Um, and then we'll, we'll get our boars as usual. <coughs> and we'll, we'll take a lot of sheep and boar as well. And we're looking to click up at the perfect time of 7.55. If you guys do a few seconds later, it's fine. Try your best to get it as close to this time as possible. On the way up, we're going to go ahead and make a second lumber camp with seven fills. And then, you know, distribute uh, to have seven fills on each lumber camp. So two lumber camps, seven fills each. And then the important thing here is to make a barracks on the way up as well to be able to also afford uh, to make that archer switch as well. One thing I forgot to mention, we're going to also make a mining camp with three villagers and take some gold. It's very important to take gold early because we're going to produce some fire galleys as well as some archers eventually. In Fuel Age, we're going to you know, do all these regular steps, uh, get the wood upgrade, um, make our you know, double range, as well as get seven on gold. And then only after that do we transition onto berries with our mill. Um, one important thing to note though, is that we're going to have to pull vills off of wood and make some farms in Fuel Age as well. Um, this is a very key uh, concept because if you keep the fills on wood the whole time, you're going to end up floating a lot of wood. Um, we're going to do wheelbarrow later on as well, and then just click up uh, like normal. And then we're going to go ahead and get horse collar, archer armor, and the gold mining upgrade on the way up to castleage. And then after that, it plays out uh, on a game-to-game -game basis. I cannot really help you guys out with a build order at that stage of the game. But after that, again, you can find this build order in my Discord if you are a Twitch subscriber. Let's hop right into the video though, and let's run it with a Saracen. So let's start this game here. <clears throat> Plan, of course, was the AI, no big deal. Uh, and I'm playing on the map of Rivers, so I thought this would be the best map to show you guys uh, just exactly what I'm talking about here. So we're going to start off very standard, six on sheep, you know, two houses. Uh, you guys should know this if you have uh, watched any of my builders or regular starts. Uh, it's important to identify, um, you know, on a land map, you usually only scout for your sheep. Uh, your boars, maybe your deers, your berries. However, on a water map, you need to scout for a good dock as well. Normally, these are found in the corners of the map or on the edges. So let's go ahead and scout the corners and see exactly where our um, where our best dock will be. All right. So so far, I found no water. I found a little bit of water there. Okay. All right. So quickly moving along here. Again, use shift Q to try and get you know a better uh, efficiency on the uh, sheep and goats. There we go, six on sheep. Now I'm gonna look to go ahead and get um, 
get my wooden come going. I still haven't found a really good place to dock. I've seen this water here, uh, but I'm looking for a little bit of a better spot. If not, I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, and dock that area. Alright, notice that I don't care too much about these sheep. It's much more important for me to find a good dock location, uh, as I've already found you know, my boar. Uh, I think I have my second boar, yeah, right here. Um, so it's really important now that I find a good place to dock. That's my next step. So let's go ahead and look here. Notice how all this water is shallow. So this is not a bad spot to dock. I'll have shore fish there, but it's not necessarily the best spot either. I've seen a deep fish. That is where I want to dock. I want to dock as close to that deep fish as possible. That is my idea. And that is the best way for me to get the most amount of fish uh, or the most amount of efficiency out of my dock. I'm going to continue scouting the shoreline. Notice I'm just scouting the shore. And my plan is just to put my dock in the place where it's going to have the most deep fish available. So again, for the wood, and the next step is to go ahead and pick up your boar. And at this point, I know where exactly where I'm going to dock. I'm probably going to dock right here. Uh, so maybe around here because it's closer to my town to make use of the deep sea fish. At this point, I'm just going to lap around and pick up those two sheep that I mentioned earlier. My next build will go ahead and make it a house, and that will also be my dock villager. So I'm going to send that towards the lake and make the house on the way there. It's important to note that I'm ignoring my berries. If you're going to go for a dock, you don't go for the berries um, because you simply cannot afford making a mill as well as a dock and fishing ships. Alright, next build goes up to wood, so I'm going to have five on wood here. I'm going to send one more as well to finally end up with six. Note that if your ship does have an eco advantage, either cheaper fishing ships, faster wooden come, you know, you're saving resources, you start with extra food, whatever it may be, you might be able to skip out on uh, the six build to wood. Uh, however, if you have a sieve with no eco bonus, it's important that you put the sixth one there. Alright, with our dock fill now, we're going to go ahead and make a dock. Uh, let's make it right out here. It's okay if the dock is far as long as it's uh, in a good spot with a lot of the fish. At this point, let's go ahead and after you have the six on uh, wood, I'm going to go ahead and grab my second boar here. Again, always making sure my votes are producing very, very efficiently. You don't want to have TC out of time because that's basically like you're uh, falling behind an economy for no particular reason. I'm going to pull in my boar. Uh, note that you could use one shot to pull him in. I just like sticking with my two. It's much more consistent. However, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to need a house here, so I'm going to go ahead and make one right now. If the dock was closer, I can make the house with my dock build, no problem. There we go. There we go. So, again, dock. It's not in the best position, because note that Rivers doesn't have the best uh, fish. But since I scouted the deep fish, I found two deep fish, and that's going to be enough for my strategy. Because remember, uh, you don't actually need to stay... Uh, on the water, I just need the initial four fish to be very efficient. I'm also going to make one more house with my dock vill on the way back. And what you could do as well is take some shore fish with her uh, before walking back to the TC. It's not you know that important, however it does help. There, uh, there I am, uh, taking the deep sea fish, not the shore fish. Deep sea fish gathers way faster. And now my next fills will just go onto sheep and boar. Uh, and I'm going to be looking to click up once I get to, uh, I think like... 24, 25 pop, I'm going to go ahead and get Loom and then click up. So let's go ahead and take two sheep now. It's very normal to take two sheep, not be afraid of it. And at this point, of course, my scout would be scouting my opponent. But for the sake of the builder, I don't need to do that. So she's coming back. Uh, I'm going to do one more here, get Loom. And then I'm going to click up right after the uh, Loom is done. Alright, so I should be able to hit a perfect time here if I did it correctly. Ooh, I'm 10 food short. 10 food short, so I have to just gather that resources. And let's go up. Alright, so again, not the perfect start, but if you have any other step with an eco bonus, you'll be just fine. On the way up to Feudal, this is when you have to actually go into high gear and do a lot of things at once. So bear with me here as I show you guys how to distribute the fills on sheep onto wood and gold, which is resources that you need right now. Note that the four fishing ships, if they're gathering deep sea fish, that's enough to maintain the village production in Feudal Age, in early Feudal Age, so we don't need to get onto the berries uh, for a little while here. All right, we'll get on the berries a little bit later once we have a few villas on gold. So what we have to do now is gonna send my villagers uh, right away as fast as possible uh, onto either straggler trees uh, and other woodlands. So again, low HP villas on the straggler trees. Six, I need seven villas to make that second lumber camp. And I need a one more to go here, so seven on each. Keep in mind, four fishing ships gathering the deep sea fish. Uh, and I'm also going to send, I think I said three, but I think four on gold is also fine. So after you do that, the next step is to make your barracks. So you're going to make it on the front towards your opponent. In this case, I had scouted him, but uh, you know, in, in a case where you know where he is, 
Uh, or if you don't have an idea, just make it on the front of your base. There it is. As you can see, you can afford everything at the right time. Let's take some gold here. And the dock, I'm just leaving it. However, the dock will be very important in early Feudal Age, where I'm going to make a couple fire galleys as well to start off. Because it's important to make at least one or two fire, fire galleys to at least fight a little bit on the water. Even if you don't win the water, even if you end up killing your fish, making a couple fire galleys yourself can A, snipe his fish, and B, protect your fish for that much longer to get a little bit more food out of them. Okay. And on the off chance that your opponent does not make any water army, you can kill his fish for entirely for free. So, first steps in Feudal Age. First steps to get wood upgrade, bills, and then make a fire galley. After that, with the leftover resources, you want to make a range. However, you want to start it off with a house first uh, because you won't have enough. The next step is to send three more bills onto the gold to make seven. Notice how I'm going to make one, but you could go up onto two fire galleys, no problem. And notice how my, you know, my fish. With the deep sea fish, the two deep sea fish, I'm able to maintain build production easily here. Alright, so again, sending more and more to gold until I have seven. Seven is the key number. And I'm making two fire galleys, and I'm gonna go up in two ranges. With the extra wood, you know, woodcutters, you're able to actually afford you know, the ranges, uh, as well as the blacksmith much earlier than you would normally would uh, on a regular build. So again, two fire galleys, you want to send them straight across to your enemy fish. And as you can see, if I did my dock correctly, I'm going to still have more more and more fish for my fishers to take. So you want to send that towards the opponent. Um, and meanwhile on the land, go for two ranges, archer production. It's important to maintain uh, houses as well. Seven on gold, that means you send the rest to uh, the mill, or to the berries, and build the mill. Alright, so at this point, you have to make another decision. If the fire galleys are paying off in the water, you can add more. If you don't need to add more, then don't add more. Uh, so, uh, you know, at least one or two, but you can add, go three or four, as many as you want from one dock, as long as they're paying off. As long as, if they stop paying off, then stop making them. Uh, I'm going to make one more here to go up on three, uh, just to find that middle ground where I'm making a few fire galleys, but I'm going to focus most of my attention now on the land. Notice how now I'm making two range uh, archer production, as well as I'm getting a blacksmith and getting ready to go uh, for the fletching very soon. My builds are going on to berries, and my... TC is constantly working. This is why this build is so powerful. Your TC is always working um, and you're getting all this done. You're getting land army done, you're getting water army done. Uh, and if you do this correctly, you can potentially kill your opponent on water and land at the same time. So once you get both ranges and your blacksmith down, you now have to seed some farms. So now you're going to pretty much a full land economy. And remember, we're going to pull off some bills off the wood and actually make farms with them. So we're going to go back and only have five on each lumber camp. Or maybe like six on one, but here five on each lumber camp, and you're still able to produce uh, double range archers. We've stopped the production of fire galleys, made three, and uh, we're gonna look to get fletching. And the build is very straightforward from here, very very straightforward, uh, as if you never even played water in the first place. However, you still have the extra four fishing ships that help you gather more and more food and get that faster uptime. Alright, so we're going to continue seeding farms here, and I'm going to play this out for another couple minutes until I get uh, I click up to the castle age. Uh, you want to get fletching as fast as possible and really start making attack on land. You have six archers as scout, uh, you can go over and start looking for your opponent and doing some damage. Notice how I have perfect archer production, I've got, you know, perfect um, you know, galley production when I needed it, my, my fish is safe, I'm controlling the water and the land. Uh, and even if I lose the water, well, I don't care because I have the attack on the land now and I have farms now, so I don't really need my fishing ships, although if they are alive, they're a little bit extra. Notice as well that I only put four on berries. You could go up to four, five, six if you need to. Uh, and here I am doing the damage on the land now. Uh, in a real game, you'd obviously go as fast as possible. For the guide, I'll just leave them here. Alright, once we go up to a significant amount of farms here, I think one more farm and then we'll go ahead and go for a wheelbarrow. If you don't know when to do this, just, you know, think logically. I have got like, you know, 300 food here. After wheelbarrow is done, I'll probably be able to click up as they're going to have uh, like, let's say a minute and a half we'll be able to finish. So I have four fishing ships plus all my farms. I'll probably be able to click up once they're done. In the meanwhile though, let's go ahead and continue making archers. And uh, as you can see, pressure on water and pressure on land. It's very important that you guys do both of them and don't just go for one or the other. Uh, because the fish is very important early on. Uh, and then, you know, killing your opponent's fish and doing damage on land. If you're able to do that, you can just instantly win these games versus someone that doesn't know uh, about some of these ideas, some of these build orders. Alright, so again, wheelbarrow is about to finish. I'm probably going to need one more villager after wheelbarrow since I'm not quite there with the food. Let's send that guy to gold. So I'm going to have eight on gold total. 
and then after that villager um, I'm gonna look to click up and this is a very similar time to as if I just played a land game an Arabia game ignoring all the water and that's the whole idea I'm able to incorporate water in my build without slowing down my actual builder in fact it's even making it quicker with those fishing ships advantage just go ahead click up here and I'm clicking up at 1730, which means I'm going to hit cast stage around like 20 minutes, which is insanely fast for a water builder. Uh, so that's going to be the end of this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this hybrid land water build with a more heavy land focus in feudal age. If you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like and comment below what you guys think about this build and how you've had success or failures with it in your ranked games. Keep in mind this is for hybrid maps only where there's enough you know water on the map to actually you know have some deep fish and be able to use fishing ships on it maps like sea notes do not qualify in this uh kind of build order uh so tomorrow i'm going to uh, upload a vid video where we take a more water approach for the maps like coastal or continental that tend to have a little bit more fish available to them uh, and then we're going to include you know how we full wall our base but that's gonna be for tomorrow uh, as far as today this is the end of the video i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys in the next one peace